Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today um, as by popular demand and a lot of requests we are going to be turning the object into a star so um, if you've um, been on around on the channel for a long time you'll know this is um, some pretty nostalgic stuff we have been doing these pretty much since I started the um, channel where I did series into a star that was my very first one and yeah I've pretty much gone through all of the planets and major dwarf planets in the solar system but people still want more of this stuff um, and yeah I'm definitely obliging to do it I really enjoy um, doing these as well and it seems like I'll see you guys um, do it as well since you um, keep requesting me to do it. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be doing Chiron over here, which is one of the small little um, asteroid-like objects that sits in between Saturn and Uranus. So in my simulation, I've got two of them here. So we've got um, Charico and then we got Chiron here. Um, I believe is the way it's pronounced. So yeah, here we go. So yeah, it's a tiny little guy. And yeah, as, um, yeah, as for old time's sake, let's do this again. I mean... Really, really fun doing these. Uh, I definitely have no um, complaints doing these, and you guys definitely um, want to see more as well. So let's do it the good old way. So um, yeah, um, let's begin. Right. So as we um, normally do with these, we're going to be colliding objects into this to make it larger and larger until we get it to the point of a star where we let it completely demolish the solar system. So <laughs> let's do this. Right. So we want to slow down time, and then we want to start shooting little asteroids into it so that one missed but um yeah we'll slow we'll slow it down a little more but we need to let chiron grow in size here before it can start eating up larger and larger objects so let's just start um throwing stuff into it so it can get a lot larger in size oh it's good to see the old particles back we don't really do many collisions on the channel um at this time so yeah it's good to have some more collisions um and videos like this um going on so yeah pretty cool stuff but let's continue so let's um, keep spam clicking these guys in. We won't go too fast. We don't want to like overload it. But yeah, there we go. Also close the menu down as well. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let's keep going. Random asteroid. And let's just, um, yeah, now we can sort of spam click since it's getting larger and larger. So it should um, constantly get bigger and bigger as we go now. So we just keep colliding these guys in here. So many collisions being made. But yeah, no collisions really show up on these small little objects. But as we can see, it's getting warmer now. Let's check the object itself. Well, I can't actually because I can't actually click on it. Um, which is kind of, oh there we go, so there's its stats now, so let's um, watch as it goes on, and we'll throw some, we'll use some, some of the tools as well. well, we'll throw some more mass in there, so we'll use material, we'll go to um, silica, and then we want to decrease the spread, um, increase the speed to a thousand, then we should be able to start shooting mass in this guy, so it should be able to start getting larger and larger, also speed up time a bit, um, there we go, so it needs to gain in size, we'll, be able to keep shooting material in it, hopefully it'll get larger and larger, um what would we want to do um here particle mass we want to turn that on and we want to give it a slight increase so let's um let's times it by there we go so we'll click it a few times now if we start shooting mass in it we're going to notice it's going to start getting larger and larger in size so let's give it times by 10 hopefully that will uh, help us out a lot the density on the objects going down it's slowly getting larger and larger it looks like it's losing material as well let's just check the um composition here so it is losing material for some reason but yeah, let's continue anyway. Um, we'll really increase the mass here. Okay, that's a little too much, so we'll lower that. We do not want to start shooting moons of mass in there, so we'll keep it in the kilogram area for now, but then let's just slowly uh, start to shoot some material in there. So hopefully not all of it is just disappearing straight away, because that would be quite annoying. Um, what material? What is this thing containing? Why is it smoking up? Let's just remove the water. There we go. That will stop it from doing that. So it looks like those asteroids were giving it water. Okay, so now we just need to hopefully shoot in here, because it we, sometimes... If you make it go too quickly, it doesn't even go inside it. It looks like some of that I actually shot completely through it. So let's uh, try it now. We'll slow down time again. Because yeah, the, the what's it? The material launcher. It's kind of weird because sometimes when you aim at an object, it just spawns the other side and goes straight past it all the way down there, as we can see. So sometimes you have to sort of back out. So there we go. It looks like it's working now. And then we can start throwing mass in it like that. There we go. That's what we want to do. So as we can see, it's getting larger and larger in size. The density has gone insane. So maybe this thing will just end up being a black hole at this rate. I mean, look at the density on that. That's absolutely nuts. And it looks like it's actually pulling all of that material that it, it, we had just, um, all of that water that it was losing. It's actually pulling it all back now since it's growing its presence in the solar system. So let's continue here. Um, continue adding mass. As we can see, it's getting a lot more mass in Earths now. It's gaining a ton of mass. The um, radius, on the other hand, is very slow. So let's just um, do this to also calculate it. So there we go. That's how big it should be. But it was taking its time about doing it. So now it is Earth size. We have shot that much mass into it. So now what we can do is we can start to eat up actual planets since this thing is now large enough to count as a planet. Eight masses of Earth. It's almost like a super Earth sort of object now um, in the outer solar system here. But yeah, it can devour Mars. No problem there. Completely annihilating that. So there we go. And actually, one thing I will do is I will give it a save just in case it randomly deletes itself since the game does tend to do that. 
So we're just going to, um, yeah, we're just going to save it like that. So in case it does despawn for any reason, we can just keep spawning it in again so we don't lose our progress. But there we go. Let's open the menu again. Look at all of the collision marks on this. It's good to, it's good to, it's, it's, it is definitely good to bring this series back. It's, it's just so fun just colliding it. And just look at all of the collision marks. It's actually lagging the game, getting a little too close to it there. But yeah, just look at the state of that surface. Just look at all of those collision markers. There's still explosions going off on this side, but all of those like shock waves of heat and stuff that is just absolutely insane but anyways let's continue um we'll just um delete all particles as well to stop any lag there we go it looks like some of those asteroids from earlier which escaped are actually being pulled back towards the planet now so it's actually sucking them in so there we go let's actually eat up an earth why not so there we go let's spawn an earth in so there we go so there, yeah this earth is not gonna last very long next to the giant chiron here now so let's um Speed up a little bit more. We'll disable the orbits as well. There we go. So now we can actually watch all of the action unfold. We can see those small asteroids are actually bashing into the side of it as well. They're all getting pulled back. All the ones that escape. But here we go. We've got Earth going against it in a 1v1 now. Obviously, the Earth is not going to be able to handle it. And it is going to be destroyed by this. As we can see, with that, it's creating an absolutely insane explosion, as we can see there. An absolutely enormous collision. Since it's remember, this is Earth was the smaller one of the two, so that's and you know, the Earth's already pretty large, um, for what it is. So, yes, yeah, we can see massive, absolutely enormous fragment rocks as we can see exploding out the side of it. There, let's um, just speed up a little more just so we can get all the action going. Obviously, tons more shockwaves, all of those particles are probably going to fall back towards the planet as well, as we can see there. Still looking pretty um, boring on the surface. Obviously, it's mostly just a greyish colour right now, so not really too much going on there. We haven't really had any water to it. It should have got some water from that collision, though, but as we can see, there it is. So, 5,000 degrees, pretty warm. It did actually gain some water, as we can see. It's also got some hydrogen from somewhere. Probably those little asteroids. Still a few more collisions being set up. Let's just speed up time a bit. Let it um, increase up. As we can see, it's losing a ton of material. Probably all the water which it had gained from all of that. But yeah, while it's um, smoking up like this, let's continue to bombard the thing. So, um, there we go. Let's um, let's throw a few Venuses in. Why not? So, there we go. So let's let it devour all of those as well. The Venus looks like it's been torn apart by Rouge Limit. It looks like it's already been torn apart and it's not even hit the planet yet. So... Yeah, that poor Venus didn't really last too long. But there we go. Just an absolute insane amount of explosions going on right there. We can see some sp absolutely spinning. Yeah, you can see that spinning particle there. It's going to fall back into the planet as well. But yeah, there we go. So that's gone. Right, there we go. But yeah, we need to start eating up a lot of larger objects. So what we can do is um, we're going to increase its mass a little more. So let's go to material. We'll do it in Earths now. So let's just, uh, yeah, we'll use Earths. We'll go one Earth in material. So we're going to keep shooting material into it. So there we go. So it's really going to pick up the Earth mass now. So there we go. And also if we just um, do it the fast track it like that, it's going to make it a lot bigger. But now it's the size to compete with gas giants and stuff like that. So we're going to use a Planet 9 to begin with. I, I think that would be appropriate to use. Um, actually, no, never mind. That's still way too big. 21,000 there. Oh, and what about good old Neptune? No, no, we're still um, we're still not close enough for that. That Planet Nine seems a little large. That one's not great. Let's use the let's use the real Planet Nine here. There we go, the proper one. So there we go, Planet Nine. How large is that? It should be able to eat the Planet Nine up. I'm hoping, but we'll we'll, throw, we'll let it um grow in mass a little bit more. We'll let it um engulf all of that material back, and then we will um launch a bit more of it because I do not want Planet Nine to destroy it. So where are we? Uh, material. Let's just keep um, shooting a bit more in there. Let it grow up in size a little more. Yeah, it's sucking it back. All that material it just sprayed out. It's sucking it all back in now. Since it's growing in mass and its presence is getting bigger. It's now got a Jupiter worth of mass. So let's just uh, fast track that as well. Now it's definitely big enough to compete with Planet Nine. So let's go ahead and slow down time. Um, we'll also save the object just in case it likes to delete itself. So there we go. Right now, let's have a 1v1 with Planet Nine here. So let's place it down. There we go. So Planet Nine versus the planet version of Chiron here and planet 9 doesn't seem to be having a good time at all and it has been absolutely eaten by Chiron here and now Chiron is now a gas giant since it has claimed a lot of the hydrogen on planet 9 there. and it's also created an absolutely enormous explosion I mean look at look how big it is you can see it from pretty far away as we can see so yeah there we go there's the sun so I mean we that's the sun we're, we're looking that far out I mean look, let's just go on the orbits that's how far away we're looking from and you can see that explosion from here so pretty uh Pretty crazy amount of fragments there, but let's um, let things calm down a bit. There we go, so they all just dissipate. But you can see some more collisions going on over here from some of the fragments. Look at all these. Damn, but how's the planet itself doing? So 27 masses of Earth now. It is now in gas giant form. 
Let's try and cool it down. I wonder what color it looks like. There we go. So pretty um, boring looking gas giant as well. Grayish sort of color. We'll see a few other colors in there. Pretty generic looking gas giant there. But yeah, there we go. So now uh, it has destroyed more objects. We will um, we'll start to launch even more mass into it. So where are we? Um, go back to um, material. Um, we'll also buff it to five earths now. Right, and then, yeah, there we go. That's fine. With silicate, then it's going to keep launching it in the planets. There we go. So it looks like it's actually turned rocky again, since the silicate is the supreme um, amount there. But as it gets larger and larger, it will return to a gas giant form. There we go. Um, let's just use... Um, let's actually use carbon dioxide. Why not? Have a little few different material in there, but then we'll switch to the normal hydrogen. So there we go. So we can see the object's getting a lot larger in size. It's almost Jupiter size now. It should be able to actually have a comp competition with Saturn at some point as well as it gets larger and larger. It's larger than Saturn. It's got, it looks like it's got way more mass than what Saturn would have as well. So yeah, we should uh, definitely have a little one-on-one -on -one with Saturn. But look at all this material from that Planet 9 incident. It looks like it's sucking it all back in. But before it can, we're going to create another collision with Saturn this time. So there we go. Right, let's see if it can take on Saturn. So there, again, we will save it just in case anything goes wrong. So there we go. Right, there we are. Oh, it, it looks like it's turned to a rocky form again. That's pretty surprising. All the hydrogen's just going all crazy on it. But yeah, there we go. Right, now let's spawn a Saturn in. We're just going to place it to the side there. And then Saturn should be pulled into it. So yeah, there we go. Saturn will probably try and suck up some of that mass as well. But it doesn't matter because either way, Chiron is going to be the one grabbing it all. But as we can see, Saturn's already been torn apart as well. But it's now colliding with the object too. So there we go, creating an absolutely enormous collision, as we can see there. I mean, look at the size of that. I mean, just we'll just pause it for a second. We'll compare the size of that collision to Earth. Look how small Earth is to the size of that collision. I mean, we'll let it eat up the Earth as well. But yeah, look at that. That's a really darn big collision there. So there we go. It's devoured Saturn now. So there we go. It probably could eat up a Jupiter. It's got more. It should have more mass once it grabs it all back. It looks like that Earth may escape, but probably not for long. So there we go. It's smoking up a bit. But yeah, that Saturn was a pretty darn big collision there. But yeah, as we continue to shoot mass into it, it's going to pull all of this fragments back anyway. So let's um, let's do that. So yeah, we'll get more material. Let's start propelling more mass in there. So there we go. And we'll buff it up to um, Jupiters now. So we'll pull it to 0 0.5 Jupiters. Now let's start spraying that material. So as we can see, there we go. We have got our star. And it's sucking all that mass back. Absolutely no problem there. There we go. It's just, yeah, it's just devouring all of that mass. Look at it. Oh, it's pretty cool just seeing it engulf all of that. Look at all these little pieces. I'm pretty sure that Earth probably didn't make it out alive. Oh, no, is that it there? Oh, no, that's just another fragment. There we go. So Chiron is now a star at 121 masses of Jupiter. But, yeah, to make things more interesting, we will uh, we'll give it a little more boost. We'll pull it to 200. So we won't make it crazily insane, but, yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. So it's 200 Jupiters. So that is now probably, I'd say it's probably an orange dwarf sort of classed object there. I don't think it's small enough to be a red dwarf. Let's just compare it to Proxima, for instance. So there's Proxima, and then we'll compare it to the sun itself. So there's the sun. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say this is sort of an orange dwarf sort of territory there for star type. But, yeah, there we go. So now that is a second star in the solar system. So let's just get a look at the orbits. So yeah, there it is. A bit of a mess, but it's sitting in between um, Saturn and Uranus still um, over there. It didn't move too far. But yeah, there we go. So now we have a second star in the solar system. I wonder how luminous it is as well. Has it got a luminosity? Yes, it does. Okay. So 0 0.07. So 7% the luminosity of the sun there. All right. So there we go. The luminosity is not really going to be too much of a big deal, though. It's going to be um, what it does to the solar system, which is going to be the real uh, determined matter of what happens here. So we can see um, Earth... Doesn't look like there's any extra sunlight it's receiving, so the star may not be bright enough. Maybe should we give it another boost? Maybe we should buff it to 400 suns. I mean, that may be a little too much. Or 400 Jupiters, sorry. Let's let's do it. 400. There you go. So that will um, give its luminosity a little more. So zero point. Okay, that's a little more presence now. So it's almost the size of the sun. So it's just about touching the yellow dwarf area of stars. Now, but yeah, we'll leave it like that. We're not going to go any further into it. We'll delete any particles still flying around. But yeah, there we go. So now, if we look at Earth. It is receiving a tad bit of light from that second star. So that's where things start to get a little interesting. Let's go ahead and land in Spain here. Um, and then let's just look around and see if we can spot that star. So we've got the main sun over there. As we can see, that's the regular sun. We'll disable orbits. So there we go. There's the sun. But if we look up, we should be able to spot an orange-like star. So where, where are we here? There it is over there. You can see there's still some collisions and um, other fragments lying around. But you can see the star itself is now in the night sky from Earth. So that is the second star. 
with a lot more mass than what Jupiter has. Let's just get a comparison here. So it's actually it's actually outbeaten the sun in size. So it's basically two sun-like stars in here now. And obviously all the planets. Okay, and then there's a ton of them. Look how big those fragments are. I'm guessing they're not going to last very long. They're probably going to get pulled back into the star here. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. All right, so zoom out. Um, so where are we? Put orbits back on, and I'm actually using the vibrant version of the solar system. So I've got I've I've recolored the planets' orbits as well. So the Neptune and Uranus orbits look really really cool in this version of the custom solar system. I have to do an update on the custom solar system at some point. But yeah, with that, with that all out of the way, let's click play. We can start to speed things up really now, so we can do it a lot faster. So yeah, I, d I doubt those objects are going to last very long around that star there. So we're going to start to see what this star is going to do, because I'm pretty sure the dwarf planets out here, they're probably going to have quite a hard time coping with a second star in here. So let's just um, see what it does. Uh, it looks like it's moving. Um, it may just fly out the solar system, so I'm just going to save it just in case we have any problems. So where are we? We'll just, we'll just call it the name of the object. There we go. Right, so I'm assuming this is just going to fly straight out the solar system. So if it does, we're going to click auto orbit. And see what it does but even with it just doing that it has changed orbits in the solar system quite drastically as we can see uranus has changed that's definitely had a change some of the dwarf planets all got flown around as well but yeah that's pretty much the end of that scenario since it flew out so now what we need to do is we need to uh, click auto orbit because um, in theory it was still orbiting the sun when it turned into a star so we're going to leave it or um, we'll pull it back to the way it was if the simulation was open of course because we're getting lag for some reason which is very annoying but yeah there we go so if we just search chiron there we go. All right, let's just reopen the sim. So there we go. Wait for it to take its time. I do not want to upset the game, so I do not want a crash. But yeah, there we go. All right, so there we go. So it's still in its original position, pretty much, um, in between Uranus and Saturn. Then we're going to click Auto Orbit this time. So now it's going to lock back onto the sun, and we're going to see what sort of chaos it can unfold. So I'm guessing Saturn and Uranus, they're probably going to get hit quite hard, since they're the two closest bodies. So let's um, click play. And see what sort of chaos. So it's now in a binary with the sun, which is in theory probably what would happen um, if it did turn into a star for whatever reason. So it's in a binary with the sun, but as we can see, the outer solar system has gone completely unstable. Now we can see the orbits of Planet Nine, Goblin, Sedna. I've got Far Out over there, um, Eris, Pluto as well. They're all wobbling around. Even Neptune um, is having some effect. Yes, yeah, Neptune's definitely got some stuff going on. It looks like the orbit of Uranus as well. Definitely some problems going on there. But yeah, there we go. So there is the Earth. Looks like the Earth may be warming up in temperature. I'm not sure. But it's probably just doing its regular sort of cycle there. But yeah, there we go. So there is the star. So let's see what chaos is. What's it got in orbit so far? So it's got Jupiter. It's already stolen Jupiter from the sun. Okay. So we've got Jupiter and Hygieia here. So it's stolen two objects from the sun already. Um, there we go. It's still in a binary with the sun. But it's already ripping the normal system to shreds. We can. Is that Saturn over there? And that's Pluto. Okay. Uh, where, where, where is Saturn now? Saturn, where are you at, buddy? Uh, Saturn. Oh, so Saturn's in orbit of it as well. So we've got Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter. It's just taken all of the three largest gas giants in the solar system for its um, for itself now. As we can see, the orbit of Neptune as well is also pulled into Chiron there. But it looks like Neptune has actually slingshotted off of Chiron, and now it's been going into the inner solar system. So Neptune is becoming an inner um, planet now. I doubt it will last for long, but it's going to be an inner planet for uh, a couple of years anyway. So there we go. It's flying in there, cut in between the orbits of Venus and Earth there as it flies out again. So it's slingshotted off Chiron and got caught by the sun at a closer point um, in its um, or closer point in the solar system there. So there we go. So Chiron is now flying to the other side. So it looks like Neptune is going to be locked around the sun for a little bit. Probably, wh whereabouts is Neptune at the moment? Let's check the motion. Okay, so only, it's only four AU away. It takes nine years to go around the sun. So in theory, that's closer than where Jupiter would normally be. So let's just use the asteroid belt for um, measurement purposes. So let's place the asteroid belt in. Okay, so where are we? And I don't want to place it around Neptune, thank you very much. Let's put it around the sun. There we go. So put it around the sun. Right, there we go. We'll put, quickly use flashlight mode. Okay, so that's where the asteroid belt normally is, and that's where Neptune is now residing. So it goes inside the asteroid belt. Okay, so yeah, it's sort of in the Jupiter area of the solar system right now. So yeah, Neptune's had a massive increase uh, or decrease in its orbit size there. Anyways, how's the objects around this going? So we've got Chiron there. We've got uh, the Mr. Spock asteroid, Jupiter. So yeah, pretty, uh, this is pretty chaotic. It's actually stealing more objects from the asteroid belt as well. It looks like Uranus has been let free there. I doubt it'll last for long, but it's somehow managed to escape. Pluto as well, in the Jupiter area. So it seems like the star has pulled a lot of the outer bodies inwards. And they have escaped the star now. And now they're now all sitting in the Jupiter-Saturn sort of area of the solar system. It looks like Neptune's orbit has been bent even more. It looks like Neptune may actually get a, heat, a massive heat increase 
how hot is Neptune? 159 degrees at Neptune as it um, surpasses closer than Mercury's orbit to the sun there. So that is pretty crazy stuff. Obviously, it's going to get further away again with its massive speed increase from the slingshot there. So its orbit is still pretty undetermined. But yeah, it looks like um, from what Chiron has done here, it's pulled a lot of the outer solar system objects inwards. Those objects have then escaped Chiron, and they've all been sitting in the Jupiter area, causing chaos for the rest of the system. But let's actually go ahead and check on the inner planets themselves. So it looks like, um, although with Neptune's interference, it looks like the inner planets are still relatively in the correct spots. We've got Mercury, Venus there, that's looking relatively normal. We've got Earth still. It's actually, no, it's a little warmer than where it was. Let's check its um, stats. So it's actually 1.01, so that's, that's still fairly pretty much accurate there. Not really too much changes going on at Earth. But it may be getting a, it may be getting a temperature increase due to the second star as well, it, since it doesn't usually go up to 18, I don't think, normally. How's Mars? Good old Mars doing. So Mars is at minus 50. So yeah, not really too much going on in the inner objects, but... As soon as one Jupiter or Saturn get close to the inner solar system, I reckon that's where some where some trouble could break loose. So I have to keep an eye. I'm pretty sure Neptune. If Neptune gets too close to Mercury, it could um, damage Mercury's orbit as well. It looks like Hygieia has been released from Chiron as well. But Ceres is the only object really orbiting properly now over there. How's the outer solar system doing? Okay, not too well. We've got a fragment over there, a lot of fragments. Maybe there was a collision between some of the objects, but let's just get a lineup of everything. See if there's anything missing. Okay, so we've got all the planets there. Still looking good. There, what is this? Is that, oh, that's probably, oh no, that's the other Earth we spawned in. Okay, so let's just delete that. That's not relevant. But yeah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so that other Earth I spawned in actually survived um, by the looks of it. I thought it was destroyed, but yeah, there we go. So here's all the objects. Okay, so there's, that's one of the fragments created from earlier. There's a few other fragments flying around. Okay, so everything's still looking fairly normal. Um, there we go. So we've got, yeah, Eris, Pluto. Okay, so yeah, no, no collisions or anything being destroyed yet, which is surprising. But let's continue. So yeah, let's lock onto the sun. Right, there we go. So let's, let's, let's speed things up a little more now. So yeah, the orbit of Neptune is just absolutely nuts right now. So it's just getting pulled in and pulled out by the two stars. So there we go. A few more objects are getting close to the sun. So a lot of them haven't quite inclined orbits. Very close to the sun there. So not too good. So it looks like Uranus now going to go in for a run in the inner solar system as well. So there it is. So how, how's Uranus doing over here? So that's probably going to warm up in temperature as well. Let's put it back on realistic. So there we go. It's getting lit up by two stars as well. But it's on its approach to the sun right now. It's warming up, going into the degrees. It got very hot there for a brief moment. I mean, look how close it flew by the sun there. I mean, that it could have almost destroyed it. Uranus was very, very lucky there to survive that encounter. But yeah, it's flying out the um, solar system or the inner solar system again. Right there. So let's continue. But yeah, yeah, that I don't, I, I don't think Uranus is going to survive much longer. I mean, that orbit seems a very, very dangerous for where it is. It looks like the other star may be giving it a little bit of assistance to stretch its orbit and more in the right direction there. But yeah, it looks like Uranus will be all right this time. It's still warming up into the 200 degree area. There we go. Um, Iris, I, Iris, where did Iris come from? That's now having an orbit close to the sun as well. Damn. So yeah, Chiron here has really caused some trouble. Um, from from where it was, how, where how far away is it now? So it's 9 AU, so it looks like the star itself has moved a little closer to the sun as well, because originally it started in between um, Uranus and or Saturn and Uranus. Now it's sort of in the Jupiter sort of orbit territory, so that seems to have moved a little closer, I want to say there. So, yeah, there we go. Um, let's continue. Right, where are we? So let's just speed it up and just watch as this chaos unfolds. So you can see the orbits are continually changing. I think something just got ejected there. And I, and I, don't, I don't think it was actually, no, it's just the fragment objects that got ejected. Okay, so let's continue. But yeah, there we go. So now traveling a couple of years. The inner planets are not really much going on there, surprisingly. I'm surprised Uranus or something hasn't actually messed its orbit, or the inner planet's orbit. So it seems like the Earth and all of those guys are holding on pretty uh, normally. So in theory, Earth is actually doing all right. 12, yeah, it's still sitting in regular temperatures. But it looks like Uranus now has now got a more stable orbit in the inner solar system. So yeah, the presence of Uranus here, that's probably not too good unless it gets interrupted, which it does there. So yeah, it's nothing stable with all the objects that have been dragged inward. Where is Jupiter? I haven't seen that in a while. So Pluto is all the way there. Okay, so it looks like uh, Pluto, Neptune, uh, Saturn as well out here. It looks like they've all they've actually been tossed out of the system completely, um, which isn't very good. So there's not really much of a solar system left. It's just a bunch of objects just springing around these two binary stars. Where is Jupiter though? Where, whereabouts are you, buddy? Uh, Jupiter. Oh, so Jupiter's long gone. Okay, so that's been completely ejected out of the system as well. So yeah, there we go. Uh, let's just check the trails, actually. So here we go. So we can see it, some stuff is just completely gone. So we'll just go ahead and remove them from the system for lag purposes. So we'll just get rid of Jupiter, Pallas, 
4,500 Pascal's gone. It looks like Saturn's gone now. Okay, so it's, um, Neptune and Pluto have also been ejected from that. So they've all met their match there. They're gone. Okay, so how's the system doing now? Just so we can see if a little easier. So Uranus is still hanging on. Um, it's actually further out than Chiron again, but it's all bit. It just cannot stay the same. It's continually changing there. But yeah, there we go. So I'm pretty much. I think that sums it up for um, if we let Chiron at four, or if we pull it at 400 masses. But let's um, let's ramp things up. We'll reopen the simulation now since not really too much is going on. We're pretty much just getting the same events going on and gone. Um, but yeah, to to, to conclude. Oh, excuse me. To conclude, if you put the mass of this to 400 Jupiters and make it a star. This is your result. It pulls a lot of the outer objects inwards to the inner solar system, and then some of them orbits just get ejected and slingshotted off both of the stars. So yeah, there we go. But now, let's make this thing a little bigger. Let's put a, a one in front of that, and then we'll, uh, is that, will that work? No. And then we'll um, we'll buff it up to about ten suns. How, how, how will it handle that? So there we go. Okay, it's made it a blue star now. So let's, um, let's see um, what sort of chaos it will do here. Now, so its luminosity is 6,000 suns. So um, we're definitely going to get different results this time. As we can see, if we go to the uh, planets, I'm guessing Earth probably isn't going to handle it very well. So here we go. So it's getting star uh, light from a blue star as well, as we can see over there. You can see it in the corner up there. So we'll just um, we'll lower the temperature down because I doubt anything that's going to really uh, survive this time. Because yeah, with these videos, we, all, we always did some more insane stars as well. So let's put them both in one video and have a more simple start and then have a more crazy start since that, that's what you guys have always liked about this series so right there we go okay well, it's only at a couple of hours right now at earth so if we just click play as we can see in hours it's it, all the water's gone already so as we can see chiron has been an absolute monster right now it is shredding the earth to pieces and yeah earth is not facing a good future now i'm guessing with all of the planets um, so we've got, yeah, Venus is going to be ultra hot as normal. Mercury's warming up. Mars as well. 300 degrees at Mars. But I'm, I'm more fearful for the objects that are close to it. So how is uh, Saturn doing? Let's get rid of that fragment as well. Get out of here. Uh, Uranus. 300 degrees at Uranus. 300 degrees at Saturn. 490 at Jupiter. Okay, so yeah, pretty, uh, pretty chaotic stuff. Let's just click play. And we're going to watch Chaos unfold. So it looks like, um, yeah, it's, it's going to... This isn't going to last long at all, is it? <laughs> oh, no. So how is Chiron doing there? So there we go. So I don't, we haven't clicked auto orbit or anything this time around, but honestly, I don't really think it's required. I think it's just gonna shred stuff to pieces, um, as we can see there. I mean, yeah, that's not too good. What have we got on zero losses? Is it just gonna head inwards? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so if we uh, made it, if this star just appeared from nowhere, it's probably gonna start. Or this is probably going to drag the sun towards it or something like that. I mean, who who knows what would happen? But yeah, just for the purposes of this video, we're going to end it off with a bang. As these two will hopefully have a collision which will blur everything up since that's um, always what has been good about this. But as we can see, in theory, if this star was to appear from nowhere, sort of like a black hole, it would probably start pulling a lot of the objects towards it since it is now the dominant mass object in the solar system. So as we can see here, pretty chaos. But as we can see, yeah, it's just going to cause stuff like that. It's just going to slingshot everything around and completely ruin everything. So if we just, yeah, keep playing it. You just get an absolute load of chaos and stuff just gets ejected and yeah, nothing's nothing safe um, at this point. But yeah, there we go. We'll just get a look at all the objects in the menu here. Obviously, not too much is really going on. It looks like Earth isn't even on the mist anymore, so Earth must have been destroyed at some point. I know that's down there actually, so no, it probably did survive. We still have that duplicate Earth in here as well. But yeah, there we go. So that will um, do it for making Kyra on a star. So yeah, realistically, when we did the proper simulation. It dragged a lot of the outer objects and made them go inwards. But yeah, but ignore the crazy one because that's not really as um, realistic as the other one when we made it um, correct, the correct size there. But yeah, as we um, head back to the way it should have been, um, I'd want to thank you guys all for um, watching this video today. And yeah, it's good It's good to bring this series back. It's always fun to just see what sort of chaos we can do just messing with the numbers in this game. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, the 400 Jupiter star, or star here, that... Um, would cause some pretty chaotic stuff just on its own, let alone the 10 masses of sun version. But yeah, there we go. So hopefully you all enjoyed today's video, guys. And if you recommend any more objects for me to do in the solar system, then definitely check out all the ones I've done already, since I've done a lot of these. Um, but yeah, if you if you got one that I haven't done, just let me know down in the comments, and I can um, hopefully get around to doing it at some point. But yeah, there we go. So that is everything. Let's see if we can get 30 likes for today's video, guys. And also subscribe if you're new. Helps on the journey to 11,000 subscribers. Again, a massive thank you for watching today, guys. And also 
make sure to join my Discord server. Link in the description. You can also recommend me ideas there and just have a chat with me about astronomy and stuff in general as well. But yeah, that is everything. So make sure you all have a great day, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.